One minute is all I need. Good evening, family. Good evening. My name is Reverend Jillian Thomas. I am here at Morning Star Baptist Church, and on behalf of Bishop John Matthew Borders, I welcome you to a conversation with a scientist. I'm just so elated that Morning Star Baptist Church has partnered with the Baker Center to do a program which we call STEP, and it means standing together to end the pandemic. I know many of you all may be COVID weary and tired. We're tired of masking up, we're tired of vaccinations, we're tired of all the information that's been out there, all, whether they're theories, whether they're conspiracies, or whether we're just up to our head with the science of it all. I know a lot of us are tired, but the truth is um, COVID still exists and COVID is here to stay. Um, I'm reminded today that just on this week, one of our bishops in the Lord's Church, Bishop Derek Hutchins, passed, and it's told that he died of COVID. People are still transitioning from COVID. And so while we're yet tired of uh, social, um, you know, social distancing and all the things that we have been made to do over the last three years, we wanted to be able to bring you some education from the scientific perspective, the medical perspective on vaccinations. I came from the West Indies and um, as a child, we had to have so many different vaccinations, but as a mother here and a grandmother, I know that before my little ones left the hospital, they were vaccinated at least three times. We thought nothing about it because we just know that to be able to be vaccinated will mean that you will protect your child um, from future uh, viruses that could affect them negatively. There's no longer polio, measles, all the things, mums, uh, just so many things that we need the vaccinations from. Well, COVID changed the whole game when it came to vaccinations, and some people became very apprehensive. And particularly within the church, we understood that many people had a lot of conversation about vaccination, whether it was the mark of the beast, whether you were being in that, uh, something that was going to your body that may have been a chip that could change your mind or change your body. And there was a lot of fear, understandably so. But three years later, there's still a lot of misinformation that's being, uh, proliferated throughout social media in conversations. And today we want to be able to have an honest conversation from a man of God who's also a scientist. Um, we have partnered with the Baker Center in the Mattapan, Dorchester, Greater Boston area to do our part to prevent, to present to the public the truth the truthful information, the science as well as the spirituality, how science and spirituality merge together. I personally believe that medicine is a mercy gift from God. And so if you have a headache, you don't have to sit there and just keep a headache. You will take a, you will take a pill to get rid of that headache. You won't think that you're putting something in your body that could negatively affect it. Well, with so much information, 
education. We know that our, 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 the numbers in our community, our children, people of color, were dying disproportionately from other um, races. And so we partnered with the Baker Center to do our best to bring to you information and to provide you with not just information that you can make an informed decision, but opportunities for you to be vaccinated, information that would help you to make better choices that can help your body, keep you healthy, as well as keep your family healthy. And today, I am excited for what we're going to present to you today. Um, I'm going to bring to you at this time, um, Sister Daniela Bradley, she's going to introduce our guest speaker for the day. It is our joy, our privilege to be able uh, to share with you this information. Daniela. Hello, everyone. I have the distinct honor and pleasure of introducing our guest speaker for today. Um, it is George Kabanga Mubalamate. He is a scientist, and he is also my father. Um, and I'm going to read his bio um, just so we can get some background as to his expertise. Um, George Kabango Mubalamate is currently working as a laboratory based research scientist at Sanofi Pasteur through YOH. At Sanofi, George is assigned to work in the Vaccine Image Explorers R&D team that is part of the global immunology R&D team of scientists. Um, R&D means research and development. Um, in this regard, the section of Sanofi R&D, where he works, is focusing on preclinical research for the generation of flu vaccines. In addition to that, George is still part of Oxford Life Science as a senior scientist consultant during the COVID quarantine time. Um, in this capacity, as a um, senior scientist consultant, he was assigned the task of conducting genetic analysis of key research reagents at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Prior to that, George worked from 2010 to 2019 at Envirologix, where he contributed to successful development of multiple immunodiagnostic tests and DNA-based tests, including tests for GMO and for human pathogens such as Listeria, monocytogen, and others. He was therefore promoted from R&D Scientist 2 to R&D Scientist 3 prior to leaving that company. Previously, he worked at IDEX Laboratories in the Research and Development Department and contributed to the development of diagnostic kits for infectious diseases, such as Lyme disease. After IDEX, he was hired as a cell culture scientist, scientist at Protein Science Corporation he worked there in the laboratory, which generated key reagents for human vaccines, including the flu vaccine and other specific reagents for the U.S. Department of Defense. In, the con in this context, addressing the global warming issue and U.S. dependence on foreign oil. He later joined the research and development team at Arbor Fuel at the University of Connecticut Incubation Technology and Research Center to contribute to the creation of genetically engineered, um, I need some help, Sac Saccharomyces cerevisiae um, for the production of biofuels. George is an immunologist who also has a master's degree in applied immunology and molecular biology focusing, focusing on genetics. Um, again, I have the pleasure of introducing uh, George Kabango Mubala Mate as our guest speaker today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to thank the church today for giving me this opportunity to talk on a subject of uh, of interest to me. It's uh, it's a really a subject that is uh, important in many ways because every generation end up having to deal with it each time we have uh, a pandemic. Uh, this time it was COVID. Before COVID, we had uh, polio, we had measles, so we had uh, uh, some uh, uh, respiratory disease that have uh, come with viruses and so forth. And each time, the science has come forth with a different way of uh, uh, fighting them. But before 
developing those uh, ways of fighting, which include vaccine in most of the time. Uh, there is already the immunity of the body that is already fighting for us. So I want to talk a little bit about the immunity. The way I look at the immunity, it's like an army. It's like an army in your body uh, that is defending you against the invasion of, uh, of uh, viruses, bacteria, and so forth. And uh, like any army in the old, in order for you to win the battle, you need to be prepared. You need to have the right tool. You need to have the right training. That's the same also for our immunity. And here the immunity is something totally natural. This is why I'm, I, I want to, to emphasize uh, on, on uh, the fact that it's natural. It's because people think like, when the vaccine comes in their body, it's the vaccine that is actually doing the job of uh, fighting the viruses or fighting the bacteria. Actually, the vaccine is coming in your body just to trigger and train your immunity so that your own body can produce the antibody that can fight the virus for you. So it's already naturally in you. The fighting is already in you. The fighting tool is already in you, but it need to be trained so that it can uh, do a better job like any army. So in the, the army of the body, I will talk a little bit in a language which people can understand instead of using scientific uh, terminology that I'm used to, to to do uh, to use during my presentation at work, I'll try to bring it a little bit uh, to the uh, to a way where everybody can understand. So, for the body, uh, there are organs that are very much involved in the immunity system, and those organs I put it up there. You have the thymus, you have the uh, bone marrow, you have the spleen, you have uh, the lymphatic vessel, you have the pear patches, you have the uh, adenoid tonsil. All these organs are in your body like uh, a, I would say like a department of defense. It's like uh, for an army, it's like a department of defense. And uh, just to give you an example, if the department of defense is not healthy, or is not uh, uh, on top of the strategy or the equipment for the army, <laughs> the army won't do a good job. So these organs play a big role in the immunity system. And the way they work, once you have a virus in your body, what happened actually, like uh, COVID or uh, uh, the measles uh, virus, uh, what happened actually at the site where it's going in your body, there will be the first reaction to protect you from becoming sick uh, with that disease. And that's what we call the innate, innate immune activation. And this is happening locally. Your body will be sending some cytokine. These are chemical uh, products that are coming to try to fight that uh, uh, virus, it's the, the entry level, and uh, some <coughs> cytokine will be also released, the interferon will be released, and all this, when it's happening, there is some inflammation happening that are fighting those viruses and fighting or bacteria, depending on what infection you are, you are dealing with. What is interesting in all this is that once that step, that first step is overwhelmed by uh, the virus virulence or by the number of the virus, the body starts a second step of mechanism to try to protect you. This is natural. And because I'm in church, this is something uh, I believe in God and uh, I believe in creation. I don't believe in uh, bang bang theory, even though I'm. Uh, a scientist, I consider that theory just to give 
uh, like uh, it scientifically it doesn't make sense to me because it's uh, uh, annealing uh, the theory of uh, cause and effect. So that's to me, it doesn't convince me. So I'll talk here in terms of creation. And when you think in terms of creation, all this system of defense was built in, in us by God to try to protect us against pandemic, against viruses, against deadly uh, bacteria. And uh, one orientation where it's without, can you show the picture, please? Without going too much in details, uh, this is what happened once the virus comes in, it's presented, and there is a cell, uh, is a number of cells that get involved to try to start fighting it once it's overwhelmed, uh, it's overwhelmed the first line of defense, which is the innate immune activation system. So this will include lymphocyte B and a T follicular helper, and it will lead to plasma cells, which I'm showing here, which are also producing the antibodies. These are like the Y uh, format that you see there. Uh, I wish I had a, a pointer to try to point uh, what is. Okay, you can see it. So. You have those antibodies that are produced directed to specific virus. In the case, for instance, of COVID, somebody gets COVID, uh, automatically there will be antibodies that are produced that are very, very specialized only for COVID. And this is something impressive to me. That's why I'm an immunologist. I, I see it and it makes me uh, believe more in uh, uh, an intelligent God who created intelligently all these mechanisms of defense to protect us from uh, infectious disease and deadly disease. So let me just show in the next, this is how they specialize themselves. You have this heavy chain of the antibody it has two parts, heavy chain and a light chain. So when you see at the top there, you'll see the part that we call para, <coughs> para top on the ant antibody. So that part is the part that goes inter in interaction with uh, the epitope from the virus to start firing it within your body. So if you consider like on the side you see I have like antigen, if you look at the morphology of those antigens, you'll notice like some one of them will fit at the top of the antibody. And the other won't fit. So that's how antibodies are specializing. Without going into too much details, it doesn't look that way. This is just an image, an illustration. In reality, it's mostly uh, amino acid sequences that are there at the binding site, and they interact with other amino acid sequences on the epitope of the virus and start uh, the interaction that is leading to the elimination of the virus from your body. This is happening naturally to anybody, vaccinated or not, you have this in your body, this ability to fight any disease in your body. That's how people survived during the time where there was no medicine, there was no vaccination. This is how they survived because they enter in contact with, anti, uh, with a virus, deadly virus like we do today, but some of them will die, but some others will survive thanks to this mechanism of defense which God provided in our body. I'm using this very, very specifically and emphasizing on God because most of the people who are against the vaccine are mostly found in church. <laughs> yeah, found in church. So I want to emphasize on the fact that this mechanism of defense 
was at the beginning put in us by God. And science, what they do? Let me just show you something very, very unique, uh, which fascinates me about this science and make me even believe also in God even more when I'm in the lab working with these things, is these antibody, they are also, they, they have like kind of special, special uh, they are specialized and they are like, let me just give you an example. We have an army in the USA. We have the Marines. We have uh, the Air Force. We have the people, who, the soldiers who are going on uh, the ground. The, <coughs> so that's the way the immune system is organized to. So there are subtypes and uh, classes of antibody that I want to point out here, and you'll see the morphology is different. Like IgM, that's the primary one. Once you have a virus, automatically you have a vaccine or you don't have the vaccine, your body starts firing it first with this IgM. And that's something I will insist. It's something that you are born with. It's a mechanism that is in your body, and it's giving you the strength to fight the virus or the invasion of the virus or the bacteria, depending on what it is. And in this case, we are talking about COVID. Everybody who entered in contact with COVID before the vaccine, they had this fight happening in their body. They had already these antibodies fighting for them, trying to defend their lives. And we have also the second class, which is IgG. And the, the third one is IgEA, and the fourth one is IgE, and the other one is IgD. And you'll notice one of the things I want to one of the things I want to point out is you'll notice for uh, for uh, IgG. It is the only type that can cross the placenta. I put it there so that I can point it out. So the protection is not just for you. If you are like pregnant with your baby and the virus comes or it, the baby gets infected, you'll be protected by these IgM and uh, <coughs> which are not crossing the placenta, but the IgG will work in you, but it will cross also the placenta to go and protect your kid and fight the infection which your kid had in the, be the belly. This is a process that is very natural. This is a process that you have in you, we have in us since we were, <coughs> since God created us. It was made that way. So when a baby comes, on Earth, it comes without a very developed system of defense. The immunity is not very well developed. And this is why uh, the hospital insists breastfeeding so that the antibodies that are in mom can go to the baby and protect the baby while the baby is developing all these organs that will help him uh, develop also the immune system that can fight the viruses and the bacteria that can get in contact with it. So I want to emphasize on this, why? Because many people are thinking like, okay, it's the vaccine you put in. I was talking with uh, Mike, uh, 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 we were having a dinner. It's, Michael is uh, my son-in-law. Uh, and we were having a dinner, and uh, when I mentioned to him, like, okay, this is uh, the, the way antibody helped us, it's not really the vaccine that is doing the job of fighting the, uh, the, the, the infection, it's actually the antibody stimulated by the vaccine that is doing the job, and it, it was a very good conversation that I had with him 
uh, the way he, he, he explained, he, he presented the problem to me. So it was a very good conversation, and uh, this is why I'm emphasizing very much on the immunity as something that is already in us, and, and I will explain later the role of the vaccine. <laughs> so the other thing that I wanted to to talk on is, this is a question. Please, can you put it up? Does our natural immunity, as I described it, always win over infectious disease? We have seen it with uh, COVID. Before the vaccine, we went all uh, into uh, I call this like we went into hiding. Really, really we went into hiding. We stayed home uh, because we knew like in some cases people are dying. So while people were dying, it's not like they didn't have a mechanism to defend their body when they got in contact, but it's just because some have a strong immunity, and that's helped many of them who were in contact with, uh, with the virus to survive, thanks to their immunity. And some got sick, and some didn't get sick because the immunity was very, very strong. They didn't get sick. They didn't even feel it. They tested positive, but they didn't feel it. Why? Without vaccine. Why? Because of the natural immunity, as I described it. It went in, the antibody went in, the army of antibody specialized to fight the COVID, which entered their body, overcame that fight. But in some other cases, when your body is weak uh, with maybe other disease, you, you can end up with a very severe di uh, disease, and we saw some of us uh, uh, departed, uh, unfortunately, which was a very sad thing. But it was very good to, to see, like, uh, the scientific community was very much aware, very much aware of what was going on. So, and they started looking into how we can solve this problem as quick as possible, as quick as possible. And the best way to solve it, as you have seen it on TV, there is no other way, it was the vaccine. It was the vaccine. It was the vaccine, development of vaccine, so that the vaccine can strengthen your immunity. So, What kind of vaccine do we have out there? I want to explain a little bit what kind of vaccine. We have some vaccine. This is one thing that people are afraid of, like when they hear like, okay, in the vaccine there is a virus in it, and they start panicking, oh, the vaccine will give me the disease. No, 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 no. That's not the case. There are vaccine that is the virus or the pathogen, but that pathogen which is put in the vaccine has been either killed or inactivated. So why are they, where, where we or scientists have been using inactivated virus or killed virus to create vaccine? It's because, as I explained to you, our body all already have a immunity system, the immunity system reacts to the presence of a virus in our body, but when it doesn't over <coughs> overcome that virus, scientists find a way of changing a little bit the virus, formulating it differently so that it can be presented differently in such a way like the body can respond with a much stronger immunity. It's like training your immune system, training the antibody, which are the soldiers in your body, to fight, to do a better fight against the, against the, the infection. 
So that's one way was is to attenuate or to kill the virus. The other one is to inactivate. That means like this virus is alive, but they removed oh, the, the genes that are uh, responsible for its virulence are modified so that it doesn't give you the disease. So the fact that it's alive and it's kind of modified in the lab and put in the formulation of the vaccine, it goes in your body, it acts much better than the one which have been killed because it's stimulating all the organ and all the cells that are involved in the immunity. My wife has been moving like this because I told her, like, if I use too much scientific language, do this so that I can, I can change. And so that's, uh, uh, that's why I, I, I'm, I'm, explaining, <laughs> I'm explaining this. So the, the vaccine, which is alive, is more efficient than the vaccine where they have killed uh, the virus and incorporated it in the formulation. In this formulation, it's not just the virus. There is a, 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 the adjuvant. We, I can't speak too much to that because I'm working on vaccine now. I don't want to uh, I'm bound also by confidentiality agreement, so uh, I don't want to fail in that trap and be in trouble at work. <laughs> so there are adjuvants that are added to the formulation and this adjuvant help in uh, uh, stimulating a very strong immune, immune, immune response, much stronger than the natural one. So the vaccine is going in just to train your own immune system, your system of defense, which is natural in you, to become more efficient in fighting the disease, in fighting, in this case, COVID. So there is also another approach, which is uh, because, let me just say this, uh, there, there was some issues with uh, the live virus because uh, of people who are immunocompromised, people who have, uh, the immunity has been weakened by uh, some disease, who I'll say, for instance, people with HIV, for instance, and if you give them the live one, in some cases, it end up uh, giving them serious problem and uh, uh, like uh, the developing that disease because their immune system is already compromised. And to avoid that, scientists have come up with a different approach. Instead of using a whole virus, virus which is alive and attenuated or killed, they start using the subunit of the virus. As you can see on this virus here, um, there, is, there are spikes. Those spikes are protein on top of the virus. So those spikes are what we call epitope. So if I go back to this slide here, this part will represent the part that is in blue there on top of the antibody that is called antigen. That part will be like the epitope. It's like representing this spike protein. And this part on top of the, the antibody is, like, is, uh, is called para, uh, paratop. And it's binding to the epitope. So instead of bringing in like the entire virus in the formulation, the scientists start using those protein to induce immunity. Why? Because we, <coughs> it has been discovered that those protein are the one that is stimulating the body and pushing it in the direction of starting producing the antibody to fight the virus. So instead of giving you the entire virus that contain also the pathological aspect of it, the, now the new vaccine, starting when I started to, uh, when I went to work with protein science, that's exactly what 
we tried to, we, we did. Uh, we worked on those protein to try to create a recombinant protein. So we took genes from the virus uh, without going too much in details. We took genes and cloned it in uh, insect cells, SF9, SF+, plus, just to avoid the fact that we don't want to give again people uh, some uh, virus that can end up uh, developing a disease in them if they are immunocompromised. So put them in insect cells and let the gene express itself and when it expresses itself, those proteins that were actually in the virus, on the virus, will be on the insect cells. And after that, it's not just taking that cell and putting it in the virus. There is an entire program of purification. It's an entire division where we do purification to get only to remove all the debris from the virus all the parts that can cause disease, remove it and remain only with the specific protein, which we call in this case recombinant protein, to be used in the vaccine so that it can give the immunogenicity or the strength to your immune system so that your antibody can fight the disease and overcome it. So this is like the purification, there are purification based on a size exclusion. There are purification, it goes through a step by step, affinity purification, ion ex, uh, exchange purification, all that remove different aspects, different particles from those viruses. And you remain only with the protein that will induce your uh, uh, immune system in the vaccine. So that's one aspect that I want to clarify why, because there are so many people who are reluctant to taking vaccine because they think like it will make them sick because somebody said, oh, the virus, oh, they, they've used the virus. They knew va there are still va uh, 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 vaccines that are using attenuated uh, viruses, but when those are the ones which have proven like they don't give disease. The ones that are giving this issue have been changed to recombinant protein in case of, uh, so that uh, we avoid, eliminate that problem. There is also another type of uh, vaccine, is the toxoid. Uh, this is a toxoid, and uh, this is uh, uh, like for uh, 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 viruses or bacteria that are producing toxin. So I'll just go to the next slide. Th those which are producing vaccine, uh, or which are producing toxin, uh, it can be like tetanus. So instead of, uh, because the tetanus itself, the, the, the <coughs> microorganism that is giving you tetanus itself, is not giving you the disease, it's the toxin that it's producing which is actually giving you the disease. So the vaccine in this case will be directed to the toxin. So that's another type of uh, vaccine that is called like toxoid vaccine. And uh, the other example is diphtheria and uh, that's just like, uh, as you know, I don't know if you, uh, yeah, but I'll just say as you know, toxins are proteins. And uh, proteins are made of amino acid sequence, amino acid sequence, and these amino acid sequence are determining the functionality of each protein. And some sequence end up giving some protein the functionality that is toxic to your body. And that's the case in the uh, in, uh, tetanus and in diphtheria. So in this case, because the protein that are produced are toxin, so the vaccine against tetanus is mostly directed also to, to the toxin.
So the, another uh, type of vaccine is uh, uh, the viral vector uh, vaccine. Uh, this is uh, like using a different type of vaccine because we know like vaccine have tendency to go inside uh, of the cell. So you use a different type of uh, virus which is uh, not patho pathologic. It doesn't give disease because there are, there are bacteria out there and viruses you live with and you don't get sick. So science selected those to try to use them in delivering the material that can act like a uh, vaccine in your, your, uh, in your body. So that's uh, another approach. And this one was uh, uh, used for Ebola. I don't think uh, many people have heard about Ebola outbreak. So this was the approach that was used. But I want to to talk about the last one, the last, uh, the, the most recent one, not the last one, the most recent one, is the mRNA vaccine. Everybody knows about it because the two first uh, vaccines that were put on the market for COVID were mRNA vaccine. And there were a lot of, a lot of discussion around this, uh, thinking like, okay, uh, it's, a, it's a generic vaccine, it may end up uh, creating problems, but uh, that issue was put to rest by science. Uh, so, <clears throat> I, I, I'll say uh, sometimes I, I, I followed a politician whom I respect very well, I won't mention the name, and he was totally against uh, the vaccine, but Everything he was saying scientifically didn't make sense. But just because he's a politician and uh, he has a lot of influence, many people are following him. Sometimes you need just to back off and say, this person who's asking me to do not to take vaccine, does he have medical background? Does he have scientific background? Because you can have medical background, but you don't have the science, the details in the way the vaccine has been done. So that's uh, uh, one aspect. So when the mRNA came, I want to explain a little bit how, how it works. You have mRNA naturally in uh, our cell. We have mRNA. And it's thanks to those mRNA that proteins good proteins are produced in our body. My, my wife told me uh, not to go too much in uh, science. So it's like the mRNA in our cells is the part that has the message, genetic message, to translate it into the sequence of amino acids that are making the protein that are making the protein. That's how the protein is made. And these mRNA are not happening in the nucleus, which is where the genome, the DNA is. It's in the cytoplasma. It's like, let me just put this slide here. Can you? Yeah. So you see the strong blue that's the nucleus. That's where the genetic, uh, the genome is. That's where the DNA is. So the mRNA are, are outside of that. That's where they produce the protein. I, I wish I had a pointer to, yeah, okay, to, to point that. So when you think that way, what the scientists did, instead of using recombinant protein, which could have taken a long, long time to come up with a, a vaccine, they used the mRNA approach. And this mRNA approach is very, very simple. It's a, you, you, you synthesize the mRNA uh, through the process that is very simple for scientists. And then you take the mRNA 
you put it in a, a, what we call LNP. Uh, it's lipid nanoparticles. And these particles are fats. There are people who have uh, uh, contacted me, like, okay, George, I have a friend who, who contacted me from Africa. Oh, George, we heard like there are uh, nanoparticles, electronic nanoparticles in the new vaccine of COVID uh, so that uh, Bill Gates can go and start uh, uh, controlling us all over the place. And uh, the, I told him, no, no, this is not electronic na nanoparticles. These are uh, lipid nanoparticles. These are fat. But they are small, small size. That's why they call them nanoparticle, nanometer. They are very, very small uh, uh, particle. But these particles have been engineered in the lab in such a way like when they, they, the mRNA is put in them, they will go inside the cell. I wish I had a pointer. Like you see there. It says mRNA vaccine. It's going to transfect the cell. Like that blue is like the cell in your body. And once it goes in, it delivers the mRNA in the cytoplasm. It doesn't go in the, the nucleus. It delivers it in the cytoplasm. And one thing I need to say here, this is very important. It doesn't stay there forever. It doesn't stay there forever. It's a very, very fragile. It plays its role. Once it's there, there will be translation of protein. It will have a message to, to produce a specific protein. And this protein, based on the information, genetic information from the mRNA, this protein will be similar to the protein that I showed you on top of the virus, the virus, those on top of the virus. And once those proteins are uh, produced, they will not give you the disease. You won't get sick from them. Actually, they are there working together with the other proteins that are in your cell but the body still recognizes them like these are foreign proteins because their sequence of amino acid will be different from native protein, the protein that you have. And because your body recognizes them like they are foreign in your body, your body starts producing antibody against those proteins. Even though it's your own cell that is producing it using the genetic information incorporated in the mRNA vaccine. The body is still intelligent enough. These organs that I showed you, like the, the, the Department of Defense in our body, are still recognizing it and saying, like, this is foreign and producing antibody against it. And these antibody, based on the way the mRNA is engineered, are much stronger than the natural one. They are much stronger. That's why when you have a vaccine and you get the disease, you can get sick, but you don't die. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. So here, for instance, look at that ca ca Yeah. If you see, you, you see, you'll see the, the antibody in Y shape, and uh, there is a SAR, COVID-2, that's the virus of COVID. And you can see, for instance, the host cell on your right have already the virus inside, the yellow one, have already virus inside. That represents like for somebody who didn't get vaccinated. So the virus are already in their cell. But look on the one on the left side, the host cell. Because it was vaccinated, you can see an army of antibody. They are Y-shaped, coming and surrounding the virus. You can see like those antibodies are binding 
to the spike, the red spike, which are the epitope on top of the virus, they are binding to that and preventing it from entering the cell. And once they bind it, they present it to macrophage, and there is an entire mechanism of eliminating it from your body in which uh, just part of your immune system. If I start going that way, I'll be <laughs> going too much sciencey. So I want it to be really understood like, okay, this is what will happen. If you don't get vaccinated, the virus comes in, there is that it will go in your cell. And if you are not strong enough, that's the end of it. But if you are vaccinated, those antibodies that are produced and strengthened by the vaccine will protect you, your cell, and by protecting your cells, they are protecting you too. So that's the beauty of vaccine. So in this case, uh, the, the mRNA uh, for COVID, mRNA vaccine for COVID, was the most rapid one to be developed and approved to go into, uh, into, on, onto the market and to be used in a human. And the people were kind of questioning that, like, okay, um, it's, uh, it's too quick, usually for vaccine, it takes years. It takes years before it goes on the market. How come this one went out so quickly? There was a lot of questions. I had those questions too, I have to tell you. But my question were put at peace. And I want your question to be put at peace, <laughs> to, to put a really at peace. Why? Because the technology was studied a long, long time before the COVID. The platform is, mRNA as platform didn't start with COVID. It was just the best template that could go very fast, that could be produced efficiently, and that could efficiently also induce what we call the inner immunity and the adaptive immunity to protect us against this disease. So let me just point out something just to appease those who still have that question like, okay, it went too fast and so forth. The concept didn't start, if you read, it started already in 1990. There were already scientists using RNA vector encoding a reporter genes, such as beta lactaminase, to fight disease like diabetes in a, uh, in a research setting. And after that, it, wa uh, it was used also in 1993, uh, where an mRNA was uh, mRNA vaccine was synthesized with uh, nucleoprotein. Nucleoprotein are the protein that are related to the nucleus of the cells uh, for the influenza virus. And this activated the immunity in a very, very strong way in a research. This is research. This is not like it went on the market. This is research on a research level. So that's the kind of research that were done years after years, and that research paid off with the COVID. Because if we didn't have that template uh, of mRNA vaccine, I think like it would have taken us a long time to, to come up uh, for the science to come up with a vaccine uh, which can fight this disease. So that should put your question at peace. It should really reassure you like, the science was done to make sure like this template is safe before uh, putting it, uh, putting COVID uh, vaccine on it and uh, use it on human. And you need to understand like the, there are a lot of research done in animals before it goes to human. So, and when it goes to human, it's, it's just start with a small group 
and these are volunteers. And I have to tell you, there are people, my, uh, uh, my nephew refused to take uh, the vaccine for a while. I tried to convince him because he was thinking like, okay, they may end up using us as a uh, guinea pig. I told him, no, it's not the case at all, because this is, the scientist community now, I have to say this, is very diverse. It's very diverse. So we have scientists, it's not like just one group, uh, ethnic group working on developing vaccine or making decision uh, on uh, where it's going, who should take it. No, it's very diverse now, very diverse. So uh, with that in mind, I, have to I, I had to explain to him like, okay, this is not the case. And while I was taking vaccine, my kids were taking vaccine, my wife was taking vaccine, and I was trying to convince him and feeling bad. It was like torturing me. I know like this will protect him if it, he gets it. But he just said no, and he was kind of feeling bad. Like we took it, like in six months, based on his belief, we would have been all dead. He was very worried too about that. But I reassure him like, as a scientist, I'm telling you, six months will pass, one year will pass, 10 years will pass, we'll still be alive. <laughs> so, so we'll still be alive. And he finally took the vaccine uh, after I explained him like that, and it was, uh, it made me very happy. It made me very, very happy when he did it. So if there are people out there who are still thinking that way, I have to, to tell you, to, to mention, not tell you, uh, uh, just to mention that it's now a very diverse community. There is just no way people will stand by and let another ethnic group being used because we are part of, uh, of scientists uh, who are contributing. Everything is done on vaccine by all the scientists <coughs> for the humanity, to protect humanity. And actually, this campaign against the vaccine, to me, it's evil. It's evil. Because if God didn't, didn't uh, want us to take vaccine, he wouldn't have created immunity in us. He wouldn't have created immunity in us. But the immunity is already there. What the vaccine does is to strengthen that immunity which is already there so that it can overcome the fight against deadly viruses, deadly bacteria, and deadly uh, <coughs> microorganisms. So I had uh, these slides. Uh, I, I think it's too sciencey. It's just to tell you, uh, to mention that there is a lot of work in designing uh, uh, mRNA for uh, vaccine purpose. So there are things that are taken in consideration, like uh, the stability, so that when it goes in, it's stable. When you keep it at a certain temperature, it's stable, and when it goes in the body, it's still doing the job. And the protein translation, the functionality, all those aspects are taken in consideration. And there are modifications, like what you see there at the five prime cap, at the five prime UTR, and the five, uh, three prime UTR polyethyl. There are modifications done there. And you can see also like in the middle, there are changes of amino acid. You see there is uridine and replaced by pseudo uridine. So there are those kind of modifications to make sure like it's safe, it's stable and it's safe. So there are, that should give you, I won't go into too much details because uh, uh, as I mentioned, this is, uh, an area where there is a lot of competition and a lot of confidentiality stuff uh, uh, related uh, to, to it. Uh, I don't want to fall in uh, the trap of, uh, of maybe mentioning things that I'm not supposed to mention because of competition between companies. It's strategies. It's not like uh, I'm hiding something 
that will arm you. No, 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 no. It's just um, marketing, like, okay, um, we protect our, uh, yeah, yeah. So one of the things I wanted to emphasize is how COVID works when it enters in your body. I want to make sure like we understand that because it will answer so many of your questions. So when it enters your body, it goes into your cells. And when it's in your cell, it doesn't go into your nucleus where the genome is, the DNA is, it stays in the cytoplasm. And in that cytoplasm, it uses the message, which is the genetic code incorporated in that mRNA to produce a protein. And those proteins are similar to the protein on top of COVID. So the body will react as if you had a COVID in you and produce a massive number and good quality of antibody to go and start protecting you against, against the, the virus. And once that army of antibody is in your body, the next time you, take, you get in contact with the virus, before even it reaches your cell and the antibody are already all over it, trying to, to fight it. And that's how the COVID vaccine works. Uh, so one of the, the things that I emphasize here, you, you see I put it in bold on my uh, laptop, it's uh, in red. I would like to read it so that it's very clear. The mRNA is quickly degraded inside your body so it doesn't stick around for long. However, the induced protective immune response remains in your bodies after mRNA is degra degraded. So after a few hours, it will be degraded, but it already induced your immune system in such a way like you are now protected and you can, your body can now fight COVID. So what happened here is uh, when you are not in contact with the COVID, there is what we call uh, memory of the immune system. So the antibody goes to rest. It's like an army that went to fight, and then now is going to rest. And the antibody and the cell that are producing them, they go to rest. And even though they go to rest, your body still have the memory coming from the vaccine, saying like, okay, next time when that virus comes, it automatically produce more antibody and send to fight that virus. That's another beauty of being vaccinated. That memory of your immune system inside of your body can be also natural, but when it's the, the, the derivative of uh, a vaccine, it produces much stronger uh, antibodies to fight the disease and uh, antibodies that are more specialized in fighting the disease. They are specialized, why? Because the vaccine uh, mRNA was engineered in a way that it produced antibodies that are much stronger. So it's a very, very capital like we we, we, we get vaccinated. Um, so I put here like vaccination matters. Yeah, it's very important like it matters. It matters the way I want to prove like it matters. It's how it has protected uh, uh, people from other disease in the past. This is, uh, these are statistics from uh, Canada uh, I wanted to put the one from the U.S., but I felt like the Canada one uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, doing the same. The same. Like for UPI, before uh, UPI and cough, I had measles and mumps, rubella, diphtheria, and polio. Before the vaccine was developed for this disease, in Canada they had like 
18,000 of cases per year of whooping cough. And after the vaccination was implemented, it went down about 87% per year. That's much better than having all that. For measles, it was like 50, uh, 53,584 uh, cases per year before they put the vaccine of measles. And after that, the cases went down to 292. In the US, it was eradicated totally. It's just recently because some parents are now, uh, have started refusing to give their kids vaccine, which is a tragedy. I've given vaccine to all my kids because it protects. It's the best way, you sh one of the best ways to show like you love your kids is by vaccine, giving them vaccine so that this disease don't end up uh, killing, killing the kids or uh, making them sick. For the mumps, it went from 36,000 per year to 103, which is like 99% reduction. For rubella, it went from almost 15,000 to one case per year which was also 99% reduction. Diphtheria, it went from 8,000 to one, 99%. Polio, it went from 2,545 before the vaccine to zero. So vaccine works. There is nothing in medical field that is very efficient in protecting people's health than vaccine. There isn't. So, uh, and this is, as I said in my first slide, it's a generational uh, war against infectious disease. Today we are dealing with, with COVID. Tomorrow there will be another pandemic, like these which I showed you were pandemic at a certain point. So every generation need to deal with this situation at one time or another. And if our generation, this generation of young people who are growing now, start distrusting vaccination, it will be a catastrophe. It's like putting the society like at the age of uh, selective, natural selection, where if your immune system is not strong, you die. If it's strong, it's like putting it a chance. You will never know. But when you are vaccinated, you know for sure, like, even if you get sick, you won't die. And that's better. That's better. I wouldn't have put it in my uh, arm if I knew, like, there was something going on. I wouldn't have put it in the ask, accepted to put it in the arm of my kids and my wife. Oh, no, I wouldn't have. But I have the knowledge. I'm trying to give this presentation uh, as in a simple way, but I have a very good understanding of vaccine, the science behind vaccine. And when I'm saying this, I'm saying it knowing exactly what I'm talking about. So if there are young people out there, please get vaccinated. That's why I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm not doing this like a show. No, 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 no. I came here because I want to convince young people who are out there and maybe adults who are out there or parents who are still very s skeptical about the vaccine, like it's the best way you can fight infectious disease and prevent uh, uh, useless death. So I put a few questions uh, for myself here. Uh, one of them was why COVID vaccine need to be updated. So this is a question in so many people's minds. It need to be updated because the virus is going through mutation. It's like, uh, let me just bring it down to this. 
when we kill the virus, just think a minute. I have a very, very uh, wild imagination. Think like I'm a virus. I live my life. I go in a body of somebody because I want to live my life, and you are trying to kill me. I will use any way possible to fight back. And the way these viruses are firing back is through mutation, genetic mutation. So when we come up with a vaccine, some of them are firing back by genetic mutation. It's just a way of, of, of bringing it to, so that we can all understand. So genetic mutation happens, and when it happens, if it happens in the sequence, it, if it affects the sequence which was used for the vaccine, like uh, nucleic acid that were used for mRNA for COVID, if they change on the, the virus, we need to readapt it because that original vaccine will not uh, produce any more antibodies that can target the, the spike proteins that were on top of, uh, of the vaccine. So it's like, like, let me put it this way. Uh, it's like, like the virus came up with a not a defense system against the weapon that we are punching in. It came with auto defense, and when it comes with auto defense, the scientists take a break, uh, 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 not a break, they set back to look and verify what did they change. They changed this sequence, so let's also change and improve our vaccine so that we can cover that, uh, that strength. So it has been happening with uh, Delta uh, strain. Uh, we have Omicron, which is uh, now uh, also out there. Uh, there may be another one. So each time it happens, if it doesn't affect, if the scientific community verify and say like, okay, the next strain which will change is not uh, impacting the current vaccine, they won't change. They won't ask you to have a booster. They won't change. There will be no other version. But if it affects the sequence that we have been put in the vaccine, there is need for us to get a booster. It's not like all the immunity you had from the first and the second booster are gone. No. You still have some, but it needs to be strengthened by bringing more, another uh, layer of, uh, of antibodies to cover the aspects that have been changed into uh, into the virus so that uh, it can be recognized when it affects you. Because if it infects you and you don't have the antibody that, uh, where, uh, that could recognize the new change, it won't be efficient in uh, uh, overcoming the, the virus. So the other question that I had to myself, because I've heard it, uh, so many people are asking, uh, how would a new COVID vaccine be different? It's, it's different because we'll be just swapping the, material, the genetic code, the genetic material, changing the genetics, just swapping it so that we include the sequence, so that the sequence from the new strain is included in the vaccine as I explained it, uh, so that it can induce a immune response that is efficient in fighting the, these uh, new uh, strains, which are beta, delta, and Omicron, and so forth. So that's why sometimes even for flu, flu is the most versatile. Genetically, it changes a lot. It goes through mutation. It goes through uh, genetic drift and shift. It changes a lot. Every season, we have to come up with a new Flu, flu vaccine. It's because of those genetic change, and that's why it's recommended like that uh, you take uh, a flu vaccine every, 
every season. So I wanted to 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 address. Uh, I'll let you ask a question, but I want to address this. This is like a, a, it has come so many times about the 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 otitis. Uh, like uh, oh, vaccine can give you otitis, can give your kids otitis, and the otitis will be. Uh, destroying their ears and they won't be able to go to school and be. So there was, this started when uh, one of the cases which uh, was, uh, which brought attention to this was in Slovakia. And, and, Slo Slovakia. and uh, the children who received the PC PCV7 vaccine uh, against this uh, pneumococcus, this streptococcus pneumonia, which is pneumococcus C, here. They are bacteria. So this is what they were targeting because this is known like okay, it's 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 it it, it, uh, it contributes to the problem of, uh, of, of otites, otites, autism, yeah, yeah, autism, yeah. So, uh, uh, sorry for that. I, uh, uh, what is it? So, when, when they, they did, uh, they, they did this, it, it, it was very clear, like, on one side, they included uh, these uh, um, strands, about seven strands, and uh, these seven strands in the vaccine didn't incorporate the new strain, which was like nine, number 19A, 6A, and so forth, which came later. So the vaccine played a role on strands that were included, but they noticed like the kids were still having the acute already so they, they they ended up making uh, analysis of uh, the fluid from the ears and finding like there was a new strain which was not incorporated in the so that was causing the problem of the ears and otitis and so forth so, yeah so vaccine itself didn't cause the problem that's what I want to say here. It's the fact that a new strain came later, which was not anticipated when the vaccine was developed. And because it was a new strain, there were new strains, they continue to cause this uh, uh, problem of uh, acute otitis media in, uh, uh, in uh, young kids. So I'm just giving, giving uh, that's for years. Yeah, giving an example of sometimes people say, oh, no, if I gi I gi uh, you give vaccine, maybe it will give my kids. It's, so we, well, I wanted to cover that aspect uh, to, yeah, you can ask now your question. I think I will thank you very much for uh, listening. Uh, and I hope like uh, this will be helpful, but the bottom line, I want to go back to this slide and leave you with this message. Vaccine development and vaccination are the best way of fighting and winning generational war imposed on us from time to time by viruses or bacteria during pandemic time. In order to win these wars, Everyone needs to participate to the fight. Everyone, everyone. And your role is to get vaccinated so that the virus doesn't find a place to go and start contaminating your grandma, your, the children, the people who are immunocompromised around you. So please, please, go get vaccinated if you are not vaccinated yet. Thank you.
The amazing thing about the Christmas Cantata at Morningstar is that you have an opportunity to experience the story of the birth of Christ in its most basic form. We were foretold of the birth of Christ, we received the gift of Christ through the Virgin Mary, and then the whole world celebrates. We can't do this without acknowledging the work of the full creative team, both in performance but also in preparation and logistics. All of this amazing musical talent that comes through the voice, that comes through the hands of our musicians, God has really gifted us with amazing ways of expression. We can't function if the behind the scenes team does not do what they do. It's the planning and the Google spreadsheets and the phone calls and the purchasing and the scaffolded work that has to be done when it comes to creating an experience. And the team that does that is really, really awesome. You know, it's really important that we don't forget the gift of Jesus Christ. Wow, well, we've had an amazing session today. I felt like I was in science class. I was in history class. I felt like I was at my doctor's office. I was right back in college, and I was really excited. And then, Mom, I'm like, no, I can really follow what he's saying right now. This was really, really good. Um, and I'm so grateful for George um, being here, our scientist. But he, he covered so many different things. First of all, that you know what? We believe in God. And God is so masterful that he created our bodies. And what I heard more than anything is that the understanding is, right? You know, people saying, yeah, when you get vaccinated, because I've had five shots, right? So I actually just get the bivalent shot. So I want you to talk a little bit about the bivalent shot because we were here and we did a vaccination drive and I got vaccinated um, for our booster. And it's good to understand that the vaccination doesn't give you the virus, right? If, you, if I hear anything today is that I understand that when I get boosted, I am actually causing my body to begin to get into this this army, this training, right? It's like calling all the troops. Go now and create this protein. Is it we're creating a protein, yeah. right? That's gonna, right? That's what say the word again. When you get it from mRNA, it will, create, it will uh, translate the message into proteins. So, and this protein will represent the sequence of protein that are on the epitope or on top of the virus. Right. And because those protein, which are epitope, are immunogenic, then they will induce they will push your body to produce antibodies against the virus. I just want to run around the church and shout on that. I mean, I got real excited, like, glory to God, amen. Look at God. So actually, as I said, it's not like, okay, the vaccine that came in is the one going around chasing the virus in your body and finding it and killing it. No, 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 no. The vaccine comes in. Actually, I have to say this, I have to explain this. It gets me very excited. This is like food to me. So actually the vaccine comes in and induces the antibodies. The antibodies in, in this case, takes care not only of the disease, but takes care also of clearing your body from that vaccine which induced it. So there is a degradation of mRNA which is happening, and one of the strategies we were we scientists fight with, with mRNA is to try to stabilize it. I want to, I want to bring it up. This is very exciting to me. <laughs> Yeah, one of the strategy is to try to stabilize it so that it can last a long time in your body before it gets degraded. So that it can stay for a while and that time will be sufficient to produce more antibody so that uh, the antibody can fight now the disease. So what is, uh, what is interesting here 
is the fact that it's your own antibody produced by your own body that is helping in fighting the disease, but also those antibody produced by your own body are helping also into clearing your body from after it has played its role. After it plays its role, uh, it, 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 plays it, it, its role it begins, it becomes it's, bleach. It yeah, becomes bleach, Mr. Clean, yeah, clean in your body. Very good right? way it of cleans, putting it. It cleans it, it, cleans yeah, it exactly. out. Exactly. It's, it's beautiful. If uh, I could just give you all the details of how the immune system works, uh, you, 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 uh, that's what makes me go on my knees and say, God is uh, amazing, is amazing because for you to create something so intelligently made, you need to be more intelligent than all the scientists put together. The master fixer of yeah, it all. Yeah, God is yeah. so, so great. That's how I understand it. George, let me ask you this question. Yeah. We talk about immunity. Some people have low immunity. Some people have um, immune compromise, um, pre-existing -con conditions. If we were to say, okay, how can and, and, and just think about this as a scientist, as mm -hmm. someone who's been in the medical field, um, how can we better improve our immunity? Because some people have the immunity where they'll come in contact with the virus and they will never have an effect. Some people will get vaccinated um, and their body can trigger a response so that it's not ultimately um, a death sentence. Some people get vaccinated and they do have the immune um, response and yet they still don't do too well once they come in contact with the virus. How yeah. can we strengthen our immunity? Yeah, the best way of doing it, I will, I will advise this, take the vitamins. Vitamins. Take vitamin regularly, daily vitamins will help your body uh, strengthen its immunity. And uh, there are some supplements out there that you can use also for your, uh, your to strengthen your immunity. Uh, Zinc, C, selenium. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to tell them what the problem yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. just There's something that you yeah. need to be able so to do. So you, need, you yeah. need to be taking care not only of uh, you're, uh, you're going to the gym, you do the gym, and exercise. so forth. You exercise, you walk, but also take some, uh, some, uh, some vitamins, some, some, supplements. some supplements, and uh, take care of that uh, immune system. Because as we get older, sometimes it weakens. But for the baby, for instance, for the babies, as I explained to you, uh, some of them, they, 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 they come uh, on earth without uh, immune defense. In these cases, for instance, the mother need to, to have breastfeeding. breastfeeding, but in order to breastfeed and produce antibody, you need to take away of your own, own immunity, body. your own immunity, right. so your own body, and uh, so that you have those anti anti uh, I have tendency to say anti core because it's in French. In <laughs> French, it's anti core. Anti core. <laughs> yeah. No, no French, so English no French. today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's my, uh, my advice to, for that. Take care of your body, exercise, eat well, eat well get rest, get, yeah, even dealing with your mental health because our yeah, mental yeah, health yeah, yeah. creates everything. a level of strain everything. on our bodies. Everything. Everything. Um, and some things we would think that is pre-existing um, conditions, but we don't understand how much stress puts, uh, um, how much mental stress puts actual stress on our physical body and it, it, it compromises our immunity. Um, it's a big deal that we're dealing with within our community and right now in the pandemic. Yeah, um, yeah take, take vitamins, that that's, that's, that's will, will be a good thing also to, to do. You touch on the mRNA, and I'm, I don't want to go into all of the science behind it. It yes. is um, definitely the, the mode of operation. It is the quickest means by which um, scientists and the, the medical community could have created the, the COVID vaccination to get it. And yes, you, you did touch on people saying how soon, how quick this thing has been made, but you did mention since the 1990s yeah. that the MRA protocol has already been utilized in the labs and then so there were um, the ability for the federal government to remove a lot of the barriers and restrictions exactly. um, and go head on yeah. to be able to get um, the much needed vaccination 
to the front line of production so yeah. that we can have it. And even though that, that was, to a lot of people, that seemed like it was too quick and it, it, it fed into the mindset that somehow the, this was being utilized against us. But it was just when you see people dying by the hundreds of thousands, you begin to remove red tape exactly. and you begin to do things and bring things forward that would have taken 50 years. It had already been at least 30 years in the making. Yeah. You want to talk about that a little I, bit? I, I agree with you 100 percent there. So here, the gov there are so many regulations uh, to get the vaccine on the market in the United States. If there is a country where you can feel very, very comfortable to take a vaccine, it's the United States because it passes through many stages. And there are few trials uh, also that are incorporated. Uh, before it goes to the market where it's going in animals. We need to present the data uh, from animal first, and you, uh, that's what we call preclinical. And those data need to convince the agency or the scientists who are at the agency, the government agency who are in charge of controlling that. And then you go on clinical level, and there are phase, uh, three phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, and you take all those data from human and you give it to them again and they uh, do the, the, the evaluation before it goes. But for COVID, it was a little bit different because of the urgency. Mm. Because of the urgency. You can't put a bureaucracy before uh, uh, a deadly disease. Mm. Like let people die because we want to follow the policy. Right. But regardless of the fact that the, some of the bureaucracy were removed, there was still a rigorous verification of the data that were produced by these companies who produced the vaccine before it got, went on the market to make sure like they are really protecting people and not harming them. <coughs> so that's, a, that's what, <coughs> what I, I can add. Uh, so, so I'll add I'll ask one one other question. This is just what I think. Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of uh, the pandemic, we had a lot of COVID testing going on. We have a lot of the home products, yeah. the home box testing that you get from your doctors. Um, what um, are the testing that we have now? Mm -hmm. it, are they correct? I'm, I'm, I'm probably using the wrong word. Can they detect. Uh, de detect, thank yeah. you, can yeah. they detect the current strains that's going on right now? Because we also have RSV, we have influenza, and we have COVID yeah. um, and all its babies, because yeah. it, you know, it produces all these babies. So are the testing that we have home right now, um, are they uh, strong enough, effective enough in detecting whether or not COVID is present in our bodies or not? I would say yes, uh, but every test we have developed, I, I have developed um, uh, immunoassay and contributed to immunoassay development and uh, DNA-based test. Every test that is developed for detection of such uh, antigen, like disease, uh, has a limitation. So usually we look at the specificity which means like the, its ability to detect, net, to, to say like somebody who's negative is not positive. Mm -hmm. So that's a <coughs> specificity. If the specificity is at 95%, for instance, they accept it. Mm. That's just the rule. And uh, there is also sensitivity. The ability to detect <coughs> the lowest presence of, of uh, the antigen or the virus in your body, if it's very, very low, uh, the ability of that test to detect it, which we call sensitivity, need to meet a certain percent. And about, mostly it's above 95 percent, okay. which uh, uh, most of the company are trying to target. Uh, there is always possibility for uh, um, false positive mm -hmm. and for false negative. But in general, they are doing, uh, they, are, they, are, they are reliable. I'll ask you one final question. Did I say one final because I'm a good Baptist? Okay, because you know, you know we always have 15 closings, uh, mm. and then I'll take a question from you, Carl, okay? Um, Can I add something? Yes. What I mean by that is when you use those tests, if it's a positive, take it just 
as it is and go to your doctor to do a confirmation test. Because there are DNA tests at the hospital that can be done more in details uh, that you can confirm, confirm those tests. These are like rapid tests that people can do at home. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a very, very big percentage of uh, accuracy in it, uh, but also we account as a scientist to ignore like there is also a small percentage like there may be false positive false and, positive, uh, and right. of, uh, false negative. So, but when it is um, positive and you don't have symptom, my advice, take it seriously, go get a confirmation on like PCR test done at the hospital. Uh, or if you are not symptomatic, isolate yourself from people who are uh, even compromised, like old people, kids, or something like that. If you have old people around you, isolate yourself. But if it is negative and you have symptom, find another test and verify. Okay. Uh, find another type of test because uh, uh, the immuno, immuno essay are, are best. I don't want to confuse people uh, because I want people to stay on the message of the vaccine. Right. So the immuno essay, most of the tests that are out there, that immuno essay, they are using antibody specificity. There are antibody in it. Uh, and it's those antibodies that are detecting the antigen in the sample. Okay. So, and uh, there is a, 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 a secondary, there is primary antibody which is capturing if the, the antigen or the bacteria or the virus is in the blood, the primary antigen, uh, antibody on the solid phase will capture the antigen. And then the secondary antibody which is which is conjugated to a dye mm -hmm. or a fluorescein, will come and bind also to the antigen. Because it's on solid phase, it will light up okay. and say like it's positive. So I, I don't want to confuse people. That's how the test works, if it's immunoassay. On DNA side, there are primers, uh, which there are primers uh, which are designed on each side, they will select. You select a, a fragment of uh, of DNA in a in a in a in a virus, which is totally the sequence is totally different from all other viruses, all other bacteria, in such a way like the test is specific. specific. Very specific. So you need really to target a sequence of D, uh, of uh, genes or, or in the DNA which is very, very specific to that. So and I there is the, a lot of work. The best thing that you're saying is have more than one type of test at your house, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, that way, if you, you know, if you have, I think I have Binox or whatever, yeah. have different testing. So if you do test, if you're not feeling well, you test yeah. negative on this one, use a different, different type of one. test, yeah, rapid exactly. test at home, exactly. that way to see at least, yeah. um, and then ultimately go, go to, to your hospital. pharmacy, go to your exactly. doctor and yeah. get tested. Yeah. Carl, I'll let you have a question. How many booster shots are there? Oh, now there are four. There are four booster shots. Yeah, there shots. are four now. Yeah, the fourth one, if you get, yeah, yeah, those three more, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. And so I have the, look at this, probably my last question, the yeah. bivalent test, right? Because I, I think I'm up to five. I don't know. I think I had one, then the second one, then I had probably three following up, which is fine. And so we have the bivalent test. Now, is that the one, does it have both? Because, you know, whatever the doctor says we would do, take a yeah. flu shot here and, and take the COVID there. Okay, fine, because, yeah. you know, I'm trying to travel. And that yeah. was my biggest yeah. issue. Um, it's just like, um, I don't believe that anything, as a person of faith, there's nothing that I'm going to put in my body that's going to keep me from seeing Jesus. Like the, the mark of the beast is not in, it's, it's, not it, in the vaccine. It's not in a vaccine. It's okay. not. It's just like, it's like that's, that my soul salvation is based on my faith in Jesus Christ yeah. and not on anything that I put in my, vac in my body. Yeah, if I had I'm a tumor in my that. body, or if I had cancer, I'd be going to get chemo and radiation. And then you can't tell me that I don't have faith because I don't, I don't do chemo or I don't do radio. I believe that I, God gave us medicine as a grace so our bodies can carry the soul and the spirit. We can strengthen it. We're living in a fallen world. So he's given brilliant people like George, brilliant people like our doctors and our scientists who are able to study the matrix and the DNA sequence of life itself and come up with things that can help us. So 
it makes sense to us that our spirit and, oh my God, and science come together. I get excited. See, I get excited, but I'm on the other side of things. Okay. So the bivalent, the bivalent um, vaccination, can you talk about that? And then we will end it here today. Yeah, you, you, you can get your, uh, your two different vaccines. No, uh, you can get two different vaccines without any problem. It won't compromise uh, because... Uh, the way the immune system works, if you come in with a vaccine for COVID, it will produce antibodies specifically for, for uh, COVID. And if you get a vaccine for flu, it will produce antibody for flu. There is no mixture. mixture or it's very, very well specialized. It's, it's mind-blowing when you, you think about it. So it's very special. It's like... They come in, the body selects like, okay, this is different, and produce antibody. And scan it, select, this is different, and produce a line of antibodies. So you can have your vaccine uh, together, no, no problem. And the other possibility that uh, they are that is being investigated, um, I don't want to go too much detail because of uh, Understood. Yeah, um, my line of work. Is the possibility of bring, putting them together, mm. uh, like uh, flu and uh, and uh, and uh, COVID in uh, one? In one. And so those are other possibilities that are out there. So the scientists will, doing scientific uh, yeah, types yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. So it will be uh, one shot versus for, two. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Just to avoid the react to react uh, reaction reaction the reaction, the reaction of. Uh, of your skin. He, wants to, he, he keeps it's speaking it's French here today, right? I'm like, I'm exactly. like, somebody give me a reaction, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the trigger that reaction that yeah, can get exactly. the dual reaction from one, because yeah, you would have, yeah. if you want to have two, yeah. two vaccinations exactly. in one, then you're going to actually be having dual responses in yeah, your yeah, body to the two body, different things different in one. Things. So I, I get that. You get yeah. that? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, well, absolutely. listen, it has been our pleasure. Can I shake your hands? Yes. I give you a hug. God bless you. God it has been our pleasure today to present conversation with a scientist. I won't call him Dr. George, no. but okay, yeah. George. George, yeah. <laughs> George yeah, K. Has, yeah. been, has been here. This has been a production of Morningstar Baptist Church and STEP, the STEP initiative with the Baker Center, standing together to end the pandemic. Everybody do their part, and we'll be able to get to the other side of this. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a great day. God bless you. Thank you very much for having me.